Hi, this is Lou from Glowing Pigs International, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at activity state. And this is very important to manage in any Android application. And the reason being that Android has its own memory management facility. And if memory gets low, Android will, on its own, close down applications to free up memory. So you want to make sure that you are saving any data that has to be saved before your application gets closed down so that when it comes back, it comes back in the same state that it was when it was closed down. And I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody is typing something into a notepad app and uh, they decide that they want to go look at something on the web and then continue to enter stuff. So they may go to the home button, they may go to their browser uh, button, or they may actually hit the back button. Depending upon what they do there, your application could be paused, it could be killed. Uh, and so what you want to be able to do is save what they've already typed in so that when they come back, they don't have to retype it again. So that's one example there all kinds of things if they have a list of items and they've checked a couple of those items on that list if they leave the application momentarily and then come back you want to make sure that those items they checked remain checked so what we're going to do is take a look at how we can uh, manage this now in developer.android.com in the activity page there's actually a diagram of all of the different methods that deal with this. So some of them I'm sure you're familiar with already like on create because it's in almost every application that you ever created. So what they're saying is when the activity starts the first thing that happens is on create. After that on start on resume happen and then the activity starts running. Now something can happen somebody wants to go to a different act application or the system needs some resources or whatever the first thing that'll happen is on pause which takes the activity away from the screen and then on stop can happen or it cannot happen on destroy can happen that mostly happens when you hit the back button but it can also happen uh, if the Android needs more memory resources and what that does is it shuts down the application now depending upon where you end, like if you end on an on stop and there's no on destroy, then when you come back and display that screen again, an on restart followed by an on start followed by an on resume happens. So we want to be able to save information before we get to this point where things are gone okay and we want to bring back information when we get somewhere around here so what I've done is I've created an app called activity states and basically all it does is it runs through everything that's in that diagram and outputs to a log at the time that each of those methods are happening so as we cycle through on create on resume, on pause, on destroy, etc. The log will display what's happening and we then know you know at what point do each of these things happen. Now there are two things that aren't in that diagram that we're going to also discuss. These are on save instant state and on restore instant state. If you notice here when you do an on create uh, there's this bundle saved instant state and what this is doing is it's putting information in a bundle which is a kind of group of key value pairs about the state of your activity so at certain points on save instant state will save that information and then when you come back if on restore instant state is called it will put that information back and display your screen as it was before the problem with these two items though is that they are not called all the time it's slightly unpredictable but we're gonna show you that there are ways to see when it actually does happen 
So let's run this and we can take a look at what's happening in the log. So let me bring up the log over here. And then I will bring up this. Let's close this down. I'm going to hit the back button. Now you're going to see as I close this application down you're going to see a number of things happen in the log. You see on pause, on stop, and then on destroy. All three of those happened when I hit the back button. And if you remember in the chart there's the order on stop, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. So that definitely happens every time you hit the back button. Now let's bring back the application to the forefront. And since it was destroyed, an on create, an on start, and an on resume happened. Okay. So, in one of these places, if we had had some data that we wanted to save, we would have wanted to save it somewhere in either on pause, on stop, and on destroy. And I'll explain the best place in a second. But let's just do a few more things. Let's go to hit the home button. And if you see here, when you hit the home button, on save instance state is called, on pause is called, and on stop is called. But on destroy is not called because I haven't destroyed the application. Now if we bring the application back up, you see if you don't get an on create, what you get is an on restart because the application was never destroyed. So you'll get an on restart, then another on start, and an on resume just like before. Now there are, other, there are also some other things though that we have to check out. Like let's say the person changes the orientation of the screen. And I can emulate this by hitting Control F12 on my keyboard. And now I've changed to a horizontal app. Now look what happens here. When I change the orientation, we get, get an on save instance state, an on pause, an on stop, and an on destroy. So the application gets destroyed and then it's recreated in the horizontal fashion. So now we have on create, on start, but now we're restoring the instance state. So that's the first time we've seen that. And then we get an on resume. So, and if I switch this back now to vertical, we should get the same thing. And there we go. We've got an on save instance state, on pause, on stop, on destroy. And then we've got these four coming back. Now, what do these all have in common? The most predictable item here, or multiple items, are the on pause and the on resume because they exist in all of these cases. And so it is recommended that when you're saving information that needs to come back to the screen when somebody does something while they're working in your app and then coming back to it later, you would save that persistent information in an on pause and then you would bring it back to the screen in an on resume. Now you can save that either in a database, you can save it in saved preferences, or you can save it in the bundle uh, with the uh, saved instance state. The problem with saved instance state is it's not called all the time. So you really have to think about when you would save information there. So that basically uh, explains the states and as I said, it's recommended that on pause is where you save preferences, save to a database, save to a file, whatever. And on resume is where you would bring back all that information. And it would then be brought to the screen. Next up on the tutorial list, I'm going to do an example where you can actually see this in action. See you next time.